I'm glad they put that in front of me because I was about to say something publicly. <laughs> Y'all ain't paying. Can't afford you. Can't afford me. <laughs>
again, this gets to the overall battle on what, where do we need, how do we much water do we need? But anyway, um, putting too many marbles in one basket or too many eggs in one basket can be very serious. So I just call that to your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, for that interesting historical perspective. Um, I see no one else in uh, the, the uh, meeting room coming forward. Is there anyone online who has a hand raised for comment? Chair Adams. Oh, yes. We have Michael Baer. Mr. Baer, you are on for oral communication. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to see Tom in the building, in the house. This is the first time I've seen some since COVID began that uh, someone gave a public comment in your office. And uh, thank you, Tom, for being the first. Uh, and just to parlay it off, uh, when Tom was saying about too many eggs in one basket, it reminded me that I read the uh, in the pine cone that uh, the um, district has been looking at um, Los Padres Dam and what to do about it. And you know, one very expensive option is to turn it into 3,000 acre feet of storage, and uh, that would be another egg. I'm not. I'm not endorsing that that's the move, but uh, I am interested in learning more about <clears throat> the report that came out that the, that the uh, Pinecone reported about. So hopefully we can hear some about that potential alternative water supply. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Are there any other hands raised? No Chair Adams, I see no other hands raised. Okay, thank you very much. We will close oral communications now and go to our consent calendar, which is rather voluminous this week. Um, we have items number one through 24, and I will ask if there's any board member who would like to pull an item either for comments or questions. Actually 25. Actually 25? Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, yes. The, oh, I forgot to turn the page. There it is, okay. Thank you, 25. Um, Madam Chair, I'd like to pull item 19 and 23, and 19 is on page 145, 23 is on 173. Okay, 19 and 23. Is there any other member that wishes to pull an item for comment or question? Okay, let's go out to the public and see if there's any member of the public who wishes to pull any item from the consent calendar, either for comment or question. Chair Adams, I see no raised hands. Thank you very much. Um, we'll bring it back now. And um, I will go ahead, we'll go ahead and take your comments and then make the determination on whether we want to move, to pull your items for a separate vote okay. or if we want to have them uh, within the, the regular consent calendar. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, General Manager, item 19 is for public outreach contract. Um, a couple of questions on that. Um, there's no changes in that contract, correct? That is correct. Uh, at, at administrative meeting, um, two items were added to that, but should that affect this contract? I think it was $6,000 and one for $5,000 on that contract. Correct. It, we have elaborated a little bit over the previous partial year contract. Uh, Stephanie Locke is available to address this issue. Okay. Do you want me to make comments at this point? Um, so, uh, yeah, and I thought that this was all part of the administrative committee um, item, actually. Um, this year, I did call out two subcontractors. So the um, contract with Wellman Ad is the same as it was um, approved by the board last September. And there are two subcontractors that uh, we would normally not point out as being um, something that, that is approved as part of the contract, but I wanted to bring it to the board's attention. Um, there are Let's see, hang on just a second here. Um, 
and notes. Um, Fast Atmosphere, Scott White, who helps with um, email campaigns, subscriber maintenance for our email list, uh, newsletter metric reports, audience consolidation. Um, and so he, during this fiscal year, um, we paid uh, Fast Atmosphere $3,150 to do those particular programs. Um, Sarah Oliver, who is Arts Technology Entertainment LLC, um, this year I think we paid her $2,100. And what Sarah does is works on social media management, posting ads on our social media pages, video editing, graphics and captions. Um, she does our posting and um, works on the social media plan and setup. And um, so, as I said, this past year, it was just over $5,000. And since I assume we will be also using their creative services this coming year, I just wanted to bring that to the board's attention and so included it in the staff report. And, and thank you. Um, I listened to the Public Outreach Committee meeting on the 20, April 24th. Um, all I heard was high praise for our, our consultant. So, and after hearing all that high praise, his contract comes up in front of us and it gets approved. Um, on, on that one, that's on that one. Somebody's seen 106,500. Um, my next question to you, General Manager, is for the website. So excuse me, Mr. Edwards, let me just see if anyone wants to make okay. any other questions on this item first. Thank you. Okay, um, and I just had one comment that I wanted to make uh, uh, Stephanie, if you can uh, reassure me that I'm correct on this, with the two additional items for the uh, the email platform and the uh, social media management, it is 5,400 for the year and 6,600 for the year, not by the month, as as Mr. Yes. Wellman's contract yes. is. And yes. those two uh, additional funds are taken from his overall contract, so there's not an additional cost it's been included Actually, it, is a, it is an additional cost um it is budgeted under our public outreach expenses um as i said this normally wouldn't rise to such an occasion but i thought i'd bring it to your attention and um yeah so it is in the budget um it is additional to uh, mr woman's uh, retainer which has not changed so i just want to point that out we did not increase that this year it remains the same as was approved last september so the total for his contract and the other two people is remains at 106,500. Um, yes. No. Yes. No, that adding in that um, yeah. sorry, the website, right? Yes, and so kind of a little misspeaking. Okay. The 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 106 includes all three. Okay, that's all I needed yeah. to hear. Good. Yes, Mr. Wright. And I just want to comment too. Uh, Sarah Rubin had a column in the weekly like recently, um, somewhat critical of what she described as the approval of this contract without discussion. And I just think we had two committed discussions of it. One was in the administrative committee, yeah. and the other is in the outreach committee. Right. So we discussed it two times in two different committee structures ahead of the board action that night, uh, that day. And so she was misinformed. Thank you for that clarification. Any other comments on item 19? Um, seeing none, if, now if you'd like to go to your next one, which is 23. Yeah, 23, and I think we just covered it. It's, it's talking about the website. He's our public outreach consultant, and that did not go out to bid. Why put it out to bid when we have a public reach consultant, which we hired just in October, and he said he was going to take up, um, he can handle the website too. So that cost was about $30,000, but he, he said he could do it for twenty one forty five. Yeah, so, actually, nineteen five. Yeah, with well, the well, contingency. Make that correction, nineteen yep. five. I'm just looking yep. at. Yep. We so included 10%. That redesign is in there. And I know the Public Outreach Committee discussed that one too. Well, if the price wasn't put on it, but then it came back for the budget to be approved. This was the price. But the website was talked about several. I think the general manager came to the board last month and asked if we have any questions or anything. 
submit to that. So it was talked about as Director Rowley just spoke out. Uh, Vice Chair is on the public outreach. I'm the alternate to public outreach and I listen to all the meetings. So um, this was spoken of. So um, I'm, I'm just clearing up for the public that we've been as transparent as we can be by bringing this back up once something in the paper gets there. And I, I see our audience is getting smaller and smaller. I'm glad Mr. Riley is back so, so he can look over us. So. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Edwards. Thank, thank you, And then Chair. I see that um, got hands up. Yep. Not, not on, on this it. item, but I did want to for about 10 seconds pull one other item. That's oh, all. Okay. So. All right. Are there any other comments on item number 23? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close that one and go to Mark. Uh, item 14, I just maybe want about 15 seconds on this one. Um, this is the uh, adoption uh, of resolution 2023 10, uh, amending the uh, fees and charges. Um, one of the things that came up in the finance administration meeting was the stark variances between one fee and another in terms of when the hourly rate kicks in. Is it after an hour, five hours, three hours, once one and a half? They're all over the place and there was some concern about that. And um, I had promised the general manager that I was gonna look and look at that closely and sort of just, you know, because my initial thought is somebody was thoughtful about this, do we really wanna to try to homogenize that or things that were not? And I actually did go through them um, and, and you'll see that they're still a little bit all over the page because we did go back. And so um, river permits did change. It was five hours. I think it's now down to two. I saw that. Two um, and a half. But we went to each individual group manager and said, all right, is there a reason? And it was based on the expectation of time. So. And, and I, it, that's the point that I just wanted to emphasize for the public as well as the, the rest of the board members that weren't in the administrative finance meeting. And that's, and that's the following, you know, um, it's clear to me that it's much fairer to the public that there's a thoughtful analysis of what the hourly charges will be above a certain limit, depending on the work, depending on the, on the, um, um, the task at hand. And I think that that's fair. I was looking at some of these uh, range, you know, when one kicks in over 20, 20 hours, I think, I can't remember what that was off the top of my head. Yeah, but obviously th there's, a, there's a logical nexus between when the hourly fee kicks in and, and what the nature of the task is. And I, I see no reason uh, to, to try to homogenize those. I think it would be unfair to the public. And I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments on this item? Yes, Amy. I would like to comment. Um, I see that you have done quite a bit of work yeah. and it's it's much clarified and in much more consistent. So thank you, staff, for doing that. Matt, yes. Madam Chair, one for me. Since we're making changes in this, I think uh, the general manager and you, Stephanie, are going to have to probably start making the rounds again, telling people we have changed the fees. So I know one, uh, our realtors down there, I think y'all need to visit them and say we have changed the fees and give them that so they can look at it and the word can get out. So people don't be shell shocked when they see some of this. Happy Thank to. you. Are there any other comments or questions on this item? Seeing none, then I will entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. I move to approve um, consent calendar one through 25, is it? Yes. Second. Okay. Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. Very good. That takes care of that item. We'll go right into the general manager's report. Thank you. Because we're heading into summer and there's no precipitation, there aren't a whole lot of changes. So we'll wait for this to come up. We're good. Change the sun now. Yeah, nice change. <laughs> Boy, it kind of depends where you live, though. Okay. There we go. 
You guys ready? Okay, great. Um, you see the standard format in front of you for the, for the monthly report. A couple of things I wanna highlight on just the Monterey Peninsula Water Resource System. You can see we're way under budget or target for the Carmel River. And that's because of actually what you'll see on the next page where because it was a rainy season, we maximized ASR to the extent possible and maximized the table 13 water rights. So um, you'll see that we, Calam didn't need to allocate all their withdrawals to the regular Carmel River water right, which is a good thing. Um, on the seaside groundwater basin, the important takeaway here is uh, Laguna Seca only went up about, uh, I think, five or seven acre feet. You know, its target is zero, so any pumping from there uh, is a problem. Uh, and that's primarily uh, Hidden Hills at this point, given that Bishop is served by the, the new pipeline. And Coastal is less than the target as well. Um, overall, uh, all the resources are below the target. And the targets are less important now because... Uh, your water Monterey has come online. Okay, I can't advance. So go ahead, next one. Well, while they're trying to move it, that 74, they moved it. Yep. But that 73 that you had on the last one, yep. in, in the red. Yeah, it's... That, it's over because the limit on the Laguna Seca sub area is zero. And uh, when we allowed them to put the pipeline up through Ragsdale and through uh, Ryan Ranch and connect to Bishop, that took those two units of the three units in the Laguna Seca off of pumping, but Hidden Hills is still on pumping. And so okay. they'll, all, any of their pumping is gonna exceed zero in order to serve those homes. On this, you can see we've not yet recovered uh, ASR. Uh, I'm still kind of suspecting that by the end of the water year, maybe we'll see seven to 900 uh, of stored water pulled out. Uh, Pure Water Monterey recovery, the interesting thing here is it's the, it, the actual is the same number as the end of the month last month. And that's because we met the 3,500 for the fiscal year, but a water year is a different, animal and so we're putting water into the district's operating reserve at our expense right now uh, in may and june and then when we hit july the beginning of another fiscal year you'll start to see company water going to cal am again all the way through the end of september for the water year so it'll, it'll be kind of an interesting uh couple of zeros in the middle of the water year but that's because of the fiscal versus water mm -hmm. year basis and then table 13, as you can see, the 511, um, that's an increase of about 101 over last month. So the CalM has the uh, flexibility of looking at what their withdrawals were from all the Carmel River wells and then looking what their demands were in the Carmel Valley area and saying, okay, we're going to allocate those withdrawals to table 13 because it rained. Um, and so that, that benefits everybody. This is production for customer service, or what we always call our proxy for demand. That's where you can see the Pure Water Monterey recovery of zero for last month. Um, that doesn't mean we didn't produce anything. We put it in our reserve. And uh, we're doing the same this month, and we may actually exceed our target for the fiscal year as to how much water goes in reserve. So in a subsequent month, in the next fiscal year, we can either decide to take water out of our reserve and make it company water or leave it in the reserve because ultimately with the expansion project, we're gonna to have to increase reserves again. So uh, it doesn't hurt to get a little bit ahead on that. Um, everything else you can see, Sand City uh, had some productivity uh, last month. There's been some reallocation in the Sand City uh, totals, but it's small relative to the whole. Um, at this time compared to the same time last year, we are ahead by 247 acre feet, which is significant because last month we were only better than last year at 81 acre feet. So I think that that little bit of rain that we had in May 
the fog layer, the, the marine layer that we've been having that makes Pacific Grove so cozy, um, <laughs> has had, had the effect of minimizing some irrigation demands and so forth. So uh, that's a good thing. Liquid sunshine. Liquid sunshine. Yeah. Uh, rainfall, uh, here you can see May was about normal. Believe it or not, it was a bit of a surprise. We're still at 168% of long-term average. And this is the cum cumulative rain flow, uh, rain, rainfall rather, in the red. Um, it's just over 35 inches. And finally, we are gonna end up in the extremely wet, which is the, you know, the wet, wettest category, but we're still about the sixth rainiest uh, season on record and we've got about a, over 100 years worth of data so and then on stream flow um, we're at 308 percent of long-term average and you can see that uh, even in may the watershed was still releasing water into the river uh, for unimpaired flow above average usable storage is at 96 percent um, which is at of of capacity, which is actually 101% of the long-term average. So, so we've got a lot of water in the ground. And then finally, ASR, we finished up at uh, 1,656 six and a half acre feet. Um, I think the downside, if, uh, if everything had worked perfectly and we had access to uh, ASR wells three and four for injection, we would have been able to do over a thousand acre feet of additional injection. So um, while it was our second best ever, it could have been the best ever. Yeah. Um, but that being said, there were, you know, a series of unfortunate events and with flooding and availability of wells in the valley and the conflict between wanting to inject and wanting to extract here in the seaside basin. But generally speaking, a good report. Um, I think we're teed up pretty well for the end of the year. You know, we have this two-year window. Um, Pure Water Monterey expansion will be awarded by Monterey One Water at their July 31st meeting. Um, we'll get a construction schedule shortly thereafter, but it should be about a 24-month build. So it's that 24-month period where we know that the system has a shortfall every year. And so these pockets of stored water, like, ASR will become very important. So it's great that we had a rainy fall um, because right now we've got about 3,000 acre feet in storage, which is more than the two year annual shortfall. So even if it didn't rain, we've, the water's there. Um, it won't leave us much after two years, but it's there. Mr. Riley? Oh, oh sorry. Amy first. Um, <clears throat> so I was reading the uh, you know, the little tiny footnotes under the production versus CDO and reading the TEF. And so I wanted to make this simple. Are there very specific CDO compliance requirements for each category? Are they certain numbers for each category? Is it an right. overall thing? There are fewer requirements than there were prior to January 1 of last year. So we used to have to count the first 600 acre feet of diversion to storage for ASR as if it was just standard Carmel River uh, extractions. We no longer are in that math um, because Caroline was attempting to live within their limit of legal uh, withdrawals off the river, which is 3,376. So if they do that and they're compliant there, that's really the only requirement of the CDO at this point. And the hard part about the CDO, um, and this probably projects out a year or two to when there's going to be a, an upswelling of uh, desire to start the process of lifting the CDO. The CDO is there for trespass and the trespass rules under state water code, I can't remember if it's 1502 or 1520, but anyway, the trespass rules are you're taking more water than you're authorized to take. Therefore, it's called a trespass. And under a separate section of the water code, if there's trespass, the state board can institute a cease and desist order to stop the trespass. 
Well, Calium's not in trespass anymore. If, as long as they stay under their legal limit, they're not in violation. But the CDO itself had so many guardrails that they put in there. It's the guardrails that are the onerous pieces, the condition to the no increase in use on an existing service connection. And so we're entering this phase where the company will not be in trespass. It will not be in violation of its legal water right, but we still we're stuck with the language of the CDO. And it's all that other language, what I call the guardrails that, that hurt us. So there's really not much more to it other than don't take more water than you're legally entitled to take. And that's what's in these footnotes. Correct. Because it's <laughs> yeah, and you'll see in the footnotes, you know, the mention of um, well, you, you can find the ASR number in there, the 1656 and so forth. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. I had um, uh, I, th I thought I read recently that uh, Calam has proposed um, a rate increase regarding the additional pumps that they're putting in for ASR. I don't know what the timing on that is. It looks pretty expensive, but that's not my point. <laughs> my point is, what's the timing do you think that they'll be in place so that the next time we have massive winter rains, which will come one of these days, we'll be at maximum capacity? Yeah, so the pump stations in the Carmel Valley, I believe I just saw an uh, advice letter come through this week. Um, and they are working. They're now used and useful. So some of the constraints we had over in the Carmel Valley where tank levels were dropping, uh, Pierce well went offline. Some of those could have been rectified by pushing water up the hill, but they weren't ready to go till February for that. Um, over here on this side, to get greater capacity, we still need the redundant production wells or extraction wells. I don't know what the timeline is for Calam's extraction wells one and two, which are the um, school site. Um, we haven't been privy to that. And I'm kind of hopeful that they're working on the easements to get going because we'll be ready with the expansion in two years, you know, two years plus a month or two. Um, they should be ready because wells are easier to build than a advanced water purification upgrade and so forth. Um, but I don't know the answer of where they stand on that. The skid to do wellhead treatment at ASR well number four um, should get approvals, kind of waiting on the division of drinking water at this point. Um, John, I don't know if John Lear is on. I don't know if that's at, actually at the site yet at ASR well number four. Um, There's two years a decent estimate though on, that ought to on be a, the expansion. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Hey, John. Yes. Is the skid up yet on site? Yeah, this, there's a, the, the skid to treat the mercury is on site and plumbed into the ASR4 wellhead. Um, it's awaiting uh, final permitting at um, Department of Drinking Water, and the estimate of that is four to six weeks. But see, th those two behave as a couplet. And so if, if we don't see extraction wells one and two get built soon, then you're going to go through another winter season where very likely as our well number three is in production mode or four. But if one of them is in production mode, you can't use the other one for injection anyway. It just doesn't, doesn't work that way. So that's the, the difference between potentially averaging about 13 acre feet per day on injection and 18 acre feet per day on injection is getting those injection wells back. Um, but only if it rains. It will, but don't win. Are there any other questions or comments on the general manager's report? Uh, just one yes. more from me over here. Uh, good job, Jay, Dave. Uh, Mr. Raleigh had a comment, what he made at um, public comment. When can we look into that? Because I would like to know, what is the backup plan? If something do happen, yep. um, I know you're probably going to have to talk to the Seaside Basin you, you, you know, the group ought to get together and come up with something and let's present it to the public. Well, there there is, in fact, uh, efforts right now to develop a Pure Water Monterey emergency response plan under the theory um, 
and, and it's really kind of a far-fetched theory. Uh, it's it's different than you know two two decades ago when the airport was shown to have TCE from okay. paint okay. stills. Like, this is not on the agenda. Yes, yeah, okay. I, I, I the think it was was way, yeah. But just bring us something back. Well, know, it, it's later. Yeah, yeah and it later. may take a while because yeah, the well, emergency response okay. plan is that concept. Okay. What, what do you do if there's painted water injected into the ground? Right. Thank you. Yeah. You can move along. <laughs> All right. That concludes. The okay. Thank you very much for your report. Um, now I will turn to our district council for a report out. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening to you, to members of the board, to Mr. Raleigh, and to everyone out there in Zoom land. Uh, the board did meet on Friday, June 16th, in closed session. There were two items on the agenda. The first item was conference with real property negotiators concerning the acquisition or potential acquisition of California American Water Company properties. Uh, the discussion was for price and terms. The, uh, the board received an update as to the offer uh, that was made and CalAM's response to that offer. There was a question and answer session uh, where, uh, as to the process and alternatives, but no specific reportable action was taken on item one. The second item was a conference with legal counsel concerning the existing litigation with, uh, uh, filed by Monterey Peninsula Taxpayers Association against the Water Management District. Uh, the uh, board was given a progress report on that, and uh, the, the question did focus on potential legal fees that might result from that case. There was one action taken by the board, and that was on a motion by Director Eisenhart and a second by Director Paul, and that was a authorized uh, litigation counsel to uh, negotiate an extension of time by which Monterey Peninsula Taxpayer Association could file a motion for fee award pursuant to the rules of court. The effect of that uh, stipulation would be that Monterey Peninsula Taxpayer Association would be able to defer a motion for attorney's fees until after remitted her from the appellate court if in fact there was an entitlement for attorney's fees at that time. The motion uh, was adopted, five directors in favor, none opposed. There were two directors absent. They had to leave in progress from the closed session because of the, the uh, uh, length of time. And those directors were Mayor Oglesby and Supervisor Adams. But the motion was uh, carried unanimously by those present. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. And with that, we will um, appreciate your report and move on to director's reports. This includes any um, meetings, uh, reports on trips or conferences or any attendance at meetings. Mr. Riley. Um, yeah, on June 7th, I attended a workshop on the Water Master, uh, Seaside Ground Water Basin Water Master uh, group. Um, it was a workshop for new members. And the two uh, board members who were presenters were Paul Bruno and myself. Um, but I warmed my way in. I wasn't on the agenda. <laughs> um, the uh, Watermaster board members who did attend were um, Wendy Root Askew, um, Kim Barber, and Kim Shirley. So uh, there were five of us on the board in that workshop, and we were just all getting, everybody's getting background information. But it was a good discussion. It was a good discussion. It looks like the, the whole group is interested in discussing more topics and meet more often. Thank you. What do you think of that? I just want to add that the district staff did provide some comments on that orientation because of uh, some concerns we had about assumptions and outputs that were being presented as uh, firm mm -hmm. fact. Um, so I hope that there was some temperance of uh, yeah, Maureen was, was there. Maureen was there. Yes. And Callian was represented as well, as well as staff. Okay. Thank you. Over here, any comments? Anybody doing anything on this side of the table? Okay. All righty. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Chair. I, 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 I listened to the Zoom meeting of the Monterey One Recycle Water Committee. 
Um, the Woofie alone has been approved. So they're moving up forward you know, on a number of contracts. Um, they did a bunch of them in, in, in six through 14. So I didn't know what they were, but they were contract for uh, Pure Water Monterey. So they are moving forward on getting that done with the Wiffy loan being the, one of the main ones that they need to get approved. Now that got to go to the board at uh, the end of this month. And in July, we hope that um, they will be giving out those contracts. Another one that made that possible for the Wiffy loan was the city of Seaside, Mayor Oglesby and his council making sure that the in easement we're moving ahead. Even though they got, we got to do appraisal on them, they got to do appraisal, but the mayor and this mayor pushed for the council to let them go in there and get the work done and put the approval on those as easement. We don't know how much they're going to cost, but we're working with Monterey One in that. So I just want to make sure that people know that the mayor going to make sure that the city of Seaside get whatever it takes to, to get that done, but they're moving forward on that, on the Wiffle Law. So I like to thank the mayor himself for getting that done when that was brought to his attention. So, and I made my usual visit down to the city of Seaside to let them know what's going on. I'm glad I was there because they talked about the easements and um, we got it moving. So the mayor got it moving with his council. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, on that topic, we got our notice of approval and a signed agreement for our $4.8 million grant for the expansion on Friday. So we now have both grants uh, fully approved and we just have to figure out how to get reimbursed. Thank you for that good news. No other comments? Okay, thank you. With that, we will close um, the item 28 and go to item 29, which is our um, public hearing. We have one item, and it's to consider adoption of the July through September 2023 quarterly water supply strategy and budget. Mr. Lear. Mr. Lear, are you here? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the board chair. Um, this is your public hearing, item 29, and it is for the, to consider the adoption of the July through September 2023 quarterly water budget strategy. Um, thank you. And next slide, please. So when we do this, we do look at the next month of uh, or quarter of precipitation. Um, not expecting much uh, through this um, next three months as it's not really a rainy time. So, um, but we wanted to show you the prediction. Uh, next slide, please. So the quarterly water budget takes into account many um, state water resources control board orders. The numbers are listed here. They have a bunch of different requirements as well as the cease and desist order that has, um, that as Dave was saying, sets the limit off the river to the 3376. Um, we do go through and um, also use uh, district rule 160 and use those targets as well as we're uh, assigning the water to be produced uh, um, out of this resource system and the water projects for the next three months, which is the close of the water year. Um, as Dave stated earlier, um, for ASR, we injected um, 1,656 acre feet this year, um, gives us almost 3,000 acre feet in storage, and the group decided to get um, to recover as much as 959 acre feet um, over the last quarter that would leave just over 2000 acre feet in storage to start water year 2024 to be used to um, with drought relief or to fit um, any supply gaps in water year 2024. Um, it likely would be um, about the same order of magnitude in 2024. We'll see the shortfall. So as Dave said, there is enough water to use it this end of this water year and for water year 2024 and 2025 right now in the ground to meet about a thousand acre foot um, shortfall in uh, supply to meet demand. Um, any other water we get over the next two winters um, will be additional to that and and um, it's just good to start those two water years with what we need in the bank. 
well, table 13. Um, there will be no more table 13 uh, diversions as we're outside of the permit. On the last day that um, table 13 is allowed to be diverted is May 30th. Um, we got 511 this water year, and that was a good uh, additional supply. Helped to uh, whittle down um, additional supply needed to make it through and allowed us to recover less water out of the ASR bank in these last three water years, last three months of the water year. And over the last quarter, as Dave said, um, in, in uh, the next month, we will start um, to inject Pure Water Monterey and the company will start to produce that again. So the close of the quarter, um, the target is to produce about 655 acre feet, which will be equal to the amount that is projected to be injected over the last three months of the water year. Um, there are different amounts of water that is injected at different times of years. Um, during the winter, more water is injected. And during the summer, a component of the water that's produced when the plant goes to meet the, uh, crop demands in Casterville. So during the summer, the amount injected per month is slightly lower. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, some of the assumptions that we came into it was we wanted to use all of the seaside basin uh, coastal sub areas native water during water year 2023. Um, we wanted to make sure to bank water going into the next water year from the ASR system. And we wanted to, after meeting the annual requirement uh, for the 3500 and putting water into uh, the district's operational reserve, we wanted to move forward um, and start yes, to yes. begin water year 2024 with the full reserve and start into the financial year producing the required 3500 for financial year 2024-2025. And this uh, water budget was developed on June 9th, um, yeah. and the group is always is the members are the district, California American Water, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, um, NOAA Fisheries, and the State Water Resources Control Board. So next slide, please, and we can go into the numbers of what uh, the concepts that, that we used to develop the, the water budget. So the months are July, August, September, and at the rate of recovering about 400 acre feet per month um, out of the Carmel Valley alluvial wells, we will reach close to the amount of 3,376. Uh, so this is to use the full water right in the valley, and then any savings would translate to producing less water out of the ASR recovery. Um, so if we move over to the Seaside Groundwater Basin, we'll see that um, we're planning on producing and injecting about 215, 225, and 215 acre feet into Pure Water Monterey, which will then be recovered in those same months, and moving forward to produce roughly 1,000 acre feet out of the ASR recovery. So. The demand in the last three months will be met with a combination of recovering the remainder of the water right on the river, recovering ASR water, and recovering pure water Monterey as the native coastal sub area basin for this water year has been used up already. So it is, while we are dipping into some of our reserves, it's also showing that um, our water projects are working and providing water for the community uh, through these last um, three months of the water year. So, the next slide is going to be the recommendation to adopt um, should the board approve this and then um, district will move forward and file the appropriate CEQA paperwork at the county. But um, I think we could back up a slide in case there's any questions that the board may have on the actual water budget. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Lear. I will come to the board first and see if there are any questions or comments for John Lear. Hearing silence, I will go to see if there are any uh, people online who have their hands raised. Chair Adams, I see no raised hands. Okay, with that, I'll bring it back to the board and see if we can have a motion to um, approve the uh, uh, quarterly water supply strategy and the budget for that. I'll move approval. Okay, so I'll go with Amy and a second from George. 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, nope. great. So with that, um, oh, let's take it out to the public. Did I ask for the public? All right, you did that. Okay, great. Okay, how quickly we forget. Okay, thank you. So with that, we will close the public hearing and move on to our action item. We have one action item for the evening, which is to uh, review the proposed fiscal year 23-24 Monterey Peninsula Water Management District budget and resolution number 2023-07. And I will look to our GM and I'm for reports. Looking to our CFO. He's there, right? Are you there, Suresh? Good evening, Chair, members of the board. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Yes, this is action item number 30. This is to consider the adoption of the proposed fiscal year 23-24 budget uh, together with resolution number 23-07. Next slide, please. Uh, how we got to tonight is basically we issued a, a budget memorandum to the division uh, heads. Uh, it was distributed. It was due to ASD back in May. We compiled the budget, went through our own review session with team management on May 16th. Then we brought it to this board on May 25th in the form of a budget workshop where we presented <clears throat> the proposed budget. Uh, to the board and we took the uh, comments that the board made there were some good comments feedbacks received uh, uh, several uh, big changes for example we did increase the measure j dollar amount as requested by the board we did bring the um, the uh, flood drought reserve level to meet to match the uh, uh, deductible amount of the flood drought insurance we did add a section to a letter of transmittal where basically we addressed the major changes to the budget. There's some uh, little uh, uh, comments in there in terms of what increases the budget over uh, prior fiscal year. So these were all the comments received by the board. They were all incorporated in the budget itself. Um, and there were some other cosmetic changes to the board, some uh, words meeting, uh, those were changed as well. Which brings us to tonight, which is the June 20th. Uh, board adopts the budget uh, tonight and also sets the appropriation limit which basically was adopted through the consent calendar. So that item was done, but the remaining item is adoption of the budget. Next slide, please. I'll briefly just go over the budget. Uh, it'll probably just take me less than 10 minutes. Uh, it's only about a handful of slides. Uh, just to remind the board on the adopted strategy that was uh, adopted by this board uh, years ago to develop annual balance budget. And also while doing that to make sure to preserve the existing services to enable the district to carry out its uh, mission and vision of the uh, board. Also, at the same time, to maintain a uh, general operating reserve of 5% and to replenish that to over 50% over a five-year period. Well, that five-year period has expanded quite a bit. And tonight's budget that I'm presenting here, that has about 79% of the operating reserve um, that we have uh, as the general operating reserve. So we've definitely met the board's uh, strategy that was adopted years ago. Next slide, please. With this budget itself, the 23-24, we were mindful of the current uh, status of funding status, the primary one being the uh, water supply charge uh, due to pending litigation. And I'll speak more to that on uh, next slide. Uh, the original budget, <clears throat> the division requests were submitted. We did, as I mentioned, we did review those, make some adjustments during our team management. The format we've kept the same as over the years. And as I had mentioned on the water supply charge, there is a pending litigation. So what we have done is we have evaluated that impact. And what we've done is we show that the, the revenue has been collected on the water supply charge on one side, but then we are setting it aside the entire full amount in a reserve fund, which is called water supply charge reserve. So you will see that no dollar is being used uh, from the water supply charge revenue that we are going to collect in 23, 24. So that's completely 100% set aside in a new reserve fund. Next slide, please. Um, despite you know, staff's effort, the strategy to adopt a uh, balanced budget, uh, we have over the prior years, we've been using some reserve funds and that's primarily due to the large expenditures related to a PWM project. The 23-24 does include use of reserves, but the use of reserves, it's kind of like in a form of carry over projects, or we basically budget for projects in a fiscal year, given fiscal year. By the time we go to close the fiscal year, if the project has not closed out, what happens is basically the remainder project money gets rolled over to the reserve. 
And so next year, when we go to do the remainder of the project, we have to pull that money back from the reserve fund. So that's the carryover forward uh, line item that you'll see in the budget detail uh, page. So that's where basically when I say budget does include use of reserves. So that's basically what it is. It's utilizing the carryover uh, money that was um, targeted to be spent on prior fiscal years. The general operating reserve balance at $18.2 million. And as I had mentioned, that stands at about 79% of the operating budget. Uh, keep in mind, I'm highlighting or underlining the word operating budget. It's not 79% of the total $48 million budget, but it's only what the operating budget is. So that's important to note. Next slide, please. Uh, continued focus on water supply. Our budget always has been um, uh, focusing on mostly the water supply projects as well as maintaining the district's um, uh, services. Uh, since 2013, we have spent about over $40 million on water projects and about $100 million in federal and state funded uh, water projects. Uh, continued focus on water conservation. Our conservation division does that. We have a separate budget for that in this budget as well. Continued efforts on environmental stewardship. And then while doing all that, also maintaining transparency, that's important. So we have always maintained transparency um, when presenting budgets or even doing any of the projects. Uh, transparency is always utmost important uh, to the district. Next slide, please. Talking about the fiscal year 23-24 budget itself, the budget is about $48.4 million. It is uh, higher than, significantly higher, about 60, 65% higher than 22-23 budget. But all of those increase, it's important to note, all of those increase is due to grant-funded projects. There is about $18 million in grant-funded projects from two grants, $16 million towards the PWM expansion, and $2 million towards the IRWM. So, those are kind of like a one-off projects. You really can't um, rely on those because those are money coming in, money going out, but that's what triggers the budget to be such at a high level, $48 million. But really important to note that those are related to the uh, increase related to the uh, grant funded projects. The budget also has a full year of user fee revenue included in this proposed budget. Uh, and that user fee is based on estimated CalM collection of water revenues. What we do is we do monitor that revenue line item every year uh, uh, throughout the months as we go along. If any adjustments are needed, uh, we will come back during the media budget process and uh, modify that or make adjustments. But that's, that's closely monitored and we have to do that just to make sure that it's in line with whatever we are estimating. Next slide, please. Uh, it does, as I had mentioned, uh, it does include full year of water supply charge included in this proposed budget. However, that is set aside in reserve fund uh, due to pending litigation. So no dollar is being uh, utilized or spent from the water supply charge revenue. It does uh, take into account full year of property tax revenue, uh, full year of PWM water sales revenue. And again, all of these revenue line items, we will monitor and make adjustments uh, during media budget uh, process if needed. Next slide, please. Uh, just to show what the $48.4 million budget is uh, in graphical form, as you can see, PWM water sales about 27% uh, of the budget. The reimbursement projects, $20 million accounts for about 42% of the budget. Uh, personal cost, about 1.49% of the budget. Uh, there's some small slides. The reserve fund, $5.1 million, 11% of the budget. Keep in mind, $5.1 million does include the $3.4 million of water supply charge in there. Uh, and then uh, debt service zero, uh, that will go out actually. Contingency is $70,000, less than a percent. So all of those combined is about $48.4 million. Next slide, please. Actually, Shall let's pause please? there. Suresh, the debt service equals zero. We did pay off the uh, mechanics bank loan the uh, hand walk check into the bank, um, what's it been, maybe two weeks ago? Week uh, about ago. two weeks ago, we are still waiting for a letter, but we did get a verbal confirmation that they have received the payment and that that loan is paid in full. We will be getting getting a letter though on that. Do we burn the mortgage or anything? <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. As you said, we're expecting a letter, but all we have is like, the deposit slip, you know, the, it's printed on the dot matrix printer. You, know. you say dot matrix? 
Yeah, you know, just like do you, you even know really what that you means? Can find your account number and how much you just deposited. <laughs> Thank you for pausing on that. Uh, yeah, we will be getting a letter as soon as we get there. We'll share with the board. The five-year expenditure summary, as you can see, relatively in line, everything, the small ticket items, uh, the big two-line items are the project expenses, which is the green bar that shifts year to year, depending on how much project expenses we get. And then the upper one, the deep blue one, is the PWM water purchase. And so that's basically a bigger part of the expense as well. But the other part, if you see relatively fairly uh, consistent in line with over the last five years. So this is the basically just to show the board that our expenditures are in line. It's not like, you know, anywhere off the chart. Uh, next slide, please. Shifting focus to the revenue itself, the revenue summary, $48.4 million, where the money's coming from. Uh, the yellow pie chart is property tax, $2.6 million or 6% of the budget. Uh, PWM water sales, about 28% of the budget. Uh, there's some small bars there. Then the pink one is uh, grants, which is $18.9 million. That's the two grants I had talked about, the IRWM and the PWM expansion grant. That's about 40% of their $48 million. And then the deep blue there, user fee about 13% or $6 million. And then of course the water supply charge about 7% of the budget, $3.4 million. So this is where all the money's coming from. So we're just showing the separate different slices. Uh, next slide, please. Showing a five-year revenue summary, and as, as you can see, the all of the other all of the other the the main district revenues, the water supply charge, the property tax, the interest. Uh, the other one is the permit fees, capacity fees. All of those are relatively in line over the last five years. The green one is the user fee. That's also in line, pretty much. Not a big change. And then the PWM water sales is when we started billing uh, since 2021. You can see the purple uh, bar there. That's when it started going up with the PWM water sales. But relatively, everything's pretty much in line. There's no uh, surprises there uh, for the district. Uh, next slide, please. The sources and users, just to combine uh, or, or just to tabulate the budget where the, uh, or how the numbers match up, the total expenses, uh, which basically includes the salary, supplies and services, um, the projects for the grant funded projects, district uh, projects, they all total up to about $36.9 million. Reserves means we are setting aside some money, which is about $5.1 million, includes the uh, water supply charge. So that brings it the total to $48.4 million. On the revenue side, the district revenues are basically the water supply charge, property tax, uh, capacity fee, uh, user fee, those all total to $26.1 million. Reimbursement revenues are basically grant uh, coming in uh, or KLM ratepayers paying for the, um, uh, the ASR project operating cost or paying for the rebate programs. Those all total to $20.2 million. And then the carry forward reserve line, which is basically use of reserves, uh, one being the carry forward, the other being use of reserves to buy vehicles and stuff like that. So those all total up to two point, a uh, little over $2 million. All in all, the total on the revenue side, just to balance the expenses is $48.4 million. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, looking at the reserve itself, what we are doing is showing where we are estimating to finish the year, June 30th, 2023. That's where the book's gonna close. The litigation insurance is gonna be at 250. Capital reserve 1.2, flood drought at 328, uh, debt reserve, which was related to Mechanics Bank, it's 222. At some point, uh, we have already requested for that. They will liquidate that and send the money back to the district because uh, that is no longer a requirement since we have paid off the loan. Uh, the pension OPEB, a million dollars, and then the operating reserve or general operating reserve at 19 million dollars. And this is what we are proposing <clears throat> with this budget. So the proposed budget uh, ending June 30th, 24, litigation insurance to remain the same. Uh, capital reserve is gonna go up because we are setting aside every year a little bit of money uh, towards the projects that we uh, are accruing each year. The flood drought, as I had mentioned, one of the recommendations uh, by the board was to increase it to the uh, deductible amount. So that's gonna go up to 500,000. Then the debt reserve, uh, again, it's, we're still showing that because uh, 
we have not get that liquidated money back yet, but during this fiscal year, we will be getting that money back. But all in all, the money is still out there. Uh, pension OPEB, we are still setting aside $200,000 for that. So that's going to come up to 1.2. And then our operating reserve is going to go up to 18.2. So from a total reserve of $22.1 million, we are showing it's going to go up to 25.3. And of course, the footnote there that says our general operating reserve uh, is going to be about 79% of the operating budget. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a slide. It's an ongoing slide. There are going to be some more uh, numbers added to that. Uh, we have not calculated those numbers, but the water allocation process, uh, about 200,000 PWM water reserve, uh, that money, that number is going to go up. Uh, pension obligation, OPEB obligation, those are just a moving target. Those do change from year to year. But all in all, we've got about $10.7 million in obligations commitments. That's not to say that that has to be paid right away. Uh, it just shows that those are some of the obligations uh, that are out there. Next slide. Okay, that concludes my presentation. That so the recommendation is that board receive the proposed 23-24 budget, adopt the resolution number 2307, uh, adopting the fiscal year budget for 23-24. With that, if there's any questions, thank you very much, Suresh. Let me go to the board members and see if there's anyone. I'll start on this side this time. Yes. Yeah, we Mayor. go back to uh, slide. Which slide was it, Ian? See it. One more. Here it is. Yeah. This guy. Two more. Revenue. There it is. That one? There it is. Oh, I'm sorry. Got it. <laughs> That's okay. what you've been saying, huh? <laughs> I mean, the term six plus five is 48. Am I it's new math. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's time, but it's time. Yeah. I know it's going to stop. People. Yes, I understand what you're saying, and think it's a good idea. If I could just piggyback on that, the very next slide. Well, let's get an answer to this one. Okay, we've got yeah. two questions. Yeah. Suresh, are you able to respond to that yeah, I'm, question? I'm sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't able to hear the question. Is the microphone okay. on? On the sources and uses chart. Uh huh. The total expenditures plus reserves does not actually add up to the total uses. There must be a missing line item. Oh, 36 plus 5 does not equal 48. That is correct. Well, that is the new math formula that we have at the district. <laughs> uh, I, 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 will definitely, I will definitely address that. Uh, uh, let's look at the budget itself. I apologize. That it's about six six million off. Yeah, that was a midnight math, actually. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, I do have the numbers. Sounds here. like a good phrase. <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, supposed to be. If I can get this expanded. Um, <laughs> So it's supposed to be $36.9 million. And that's what it is, 36 and 5, 41. You know? Yes, second, let me see what that number is. Me three six thirty six. Oh, 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 I, I apologize. That number is thirty six point nine million dollars, is only for the um, projects. There is uh, what's missing there is the personal cost at four point four million dollars and a supplies and services line at one point eight million dollars. 
Absolutely. So people. Yeah. Yeah. So so this, this, this. yeah. Yeah, that was a typo on my end. So yeah, that number no, actually should have been. Good, good guess, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for catching that. So do, what can we do to it's, just make sure that we correct this? Yeah, it's so correct it in does, the budget document. So it's it, just uh, the initial. Yeah, that number, that number should have been 43, 247, 500. So it is only in the presentation material. The budget itself okay. is the attached uh, document to the staff note. That has the correct uh, numbers in there. It's only what they're telling us, not what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that catch. I appreciate it. And um, I think it sounds like there's consensus that we do not need to change the PowerPoint since it was simply for our edification. Yeah, I think we'll correct the PowerPoint for the website. But Thank you. That's great. Page 13 of the PDF of the budget and the subsequent expenditure summary does have all the right numbers good that's important well i have a similar question just go one more slide ahead and those two totals do not tally with the two columns of numbers they it's different there's a three million dollar difference but i can't see it in the details uh 3.4 million dollars that's the water supply charge yeah so the reserve that's not a reserve but yeah so the water supply charge if it were added to the left column to the right column it will it should tell you up at that point yeah i'm not following either I don't so would that so. be a completely different line item that, to add in? that will be a completely different line item correct and, 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 and again, on the budget, on the budget, it is reflected. It, it's actually on page. It's on page. The detail part of the budget is. Oh, this document doesn't have. Oh, it does. Twenty six. On page twenty six. I don't have those. Uh, don't have I have a packet way. number. We don't have the detail budget. Yeah, the, the page numbers of the budget only show up intermittently. Yeah, I just saw page 13. Yeah, we'll have to correct the PowerPoint on, on this one as well. It's 20. Oh, I see. There's 31. So it's in, well, place in between here. 26, I believe it's so, Directors, I have a question. Okay. I, I've, Mark Eisenhardt has had his name up, uh, his hand up for a bit. So oh, okay. well, have we take got, it in order. Have we got this issue resolved already or? To, to be resolved, yes. Okay. Is it, were you on this item, this issue rather? Uh, just because this slide is up and it would be- I had a question on this slide too. Oh, okay. you got, no, are you, sorry. <laughs> okay, since we have this slide up. Question is about the flood drought reserve. As you said, we decided at the budget workshop to increase it to 500,000, right? And um, so this this PowerPoint, I mean, this slide, and you know, it shows that 328, approximately 329,000 is what you, uh, you see, what's in the reserve at the, end, at the end of the fiscal year 2023. This is what I understand, and you stop me if I mistake something. And now we want to increase it for the coming fiscal year. So that's, but in, and that that's reflected in the slide in the budget, in the actual budget, the reserve analysis, uh, the pie chart on that slide, it does show what blood drought reserve. That? It okay. is um, page 253 in the packet, in the agenda Thank packet. You. I don't know what the page number is. Uh, oh, it's 27. Page 27 yeah. of the link 253. Yeah. 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 Here we go. So it shows the flood drought reserve at 500,000 there. But on the previous page, which is a chart of the analysis of reserves, it shows it again at, at, at 328. 
Yeah. So the correction didn't get made on this one. And now okay. actually the, the top I'm part, missing. yeah, the top part on that page, the reserve analysis, the top part, if you see the title to that or the heading is estimated reserve as of June 30th, 23. So what it's saying is that what the reserve balances are going to be as of fiscal year ending uh, June 23, but the right. adding or bringing it to 500,000, that's actually the bottom part of the reserve analysis. That's where it shows the ins and outs, the what money is being budgeted, what money is being used. So what it's saying is that for fiscal year 23, 24, we're going to be adding another 100 and, oh, what that number is here, another 130,000 something to make it up to 500,000. So what, what I don't understand is why it's still showing three, 328,000. Oh, I, I, I see where that is, yes. Uh, On the right-hand yeah. column. That did not make it to this page. That's actually on the revenue page. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just that, wondering that, if that, I was. We've got confused. a good bunch of board members here, and I'm very appreciative of your, you know, catching things like this. It's really important. It's You're wonderful. looking at 251. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying now. All right, so that should be 500. That line where it says fiscal year 23, 24 budget, it's showing yes. zero right now. That will be that $170,000 whatever the changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not going to ch change the <clears throat> final. So we're capturing all of this so that we can change it before it goes up on the website. Good idea. Thank you. And I actually, and, and directors, I apologize. I actually have that corrected changes. It did not make it to the final budget itself. I'm looking at the spreadsheet on my end. That's where the numbers were generated. And I do see that line item and it has $171,056 added to that to make it to 500,000. So the correct slide just did not make it to the final budget itself, but it is reflected in the budget. On, on my end. So we'll just update the final budget. Uh, uh, yeah, but, so this one matters more than the PowerPoint does. So let's, Yes. Mm -hmm. when we post, what's the best approach here, Mr. Clerk? Why is PowerPoint? The meeting minutes uh, will reflect and that will be uh, for the board's consideration next month. Um, the edits that were uh, made to this PowerPoint presentation. But can you reflect also in the board packet? Mm -hmm. a, board packet. Yeah, some red lettering on this item or this this um, exhibit that this has been superseded by a corrected right. version. Then just post the corrected version as uh, you know items received since the meeting, because yeah. because until the budget gets actually. Mm -hmm signed and posted to the web people will go to this document from this packet as if that's the budget so suresh we'll, we'll work that out with joel yeah and i'll and i'll send the revised sheets yeah okay so continuing on mark do you have anything else to add uh again on the same slide <laughs> i just have a question about the debt reserve is that going to be a waiting for Godot thing or can we? No, we could, we'll facilitate it. So like a, in normal municipal debt, you'd actually make your final payment using, a, but see, we did a payoff. And right. so if we were still amortizing, you'd get to your final year and you would just direct that the debt reserve be used to pay sure. the, the payment. Um, but because ours was you know 2.4 million, this was not enough. So we just paid it off and then yeah we'll without an offset for the debt reserve right so yeah we'll we actually made that request we actually made that request it to be netted out and then pay the remainder the bank said no that's not how it works that they will send us a check for that but we're not going to sit and wait for them it's been two weeks you said they're they got to make money too they're playing the float float yes <laughs> where, do, where do we put that money when we get the check be right. Well, and I doubt that it's going to have that reserve, so it'll probably find its way down to the operating reserve. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's in the. It's, yeah. 
Suresh, you understand that point that the mayor is making? No, I'm, for, for some reason, I, I'm not able to hear director. Uh, so, uh, so, so this chart that you can see has the debt reserve still in existence at mm -hmm. 6, 30, 24. Mm -hmm. But if our expectations are that it won't be there, that it'll actually be down in operating reserve. The operating reserve will go to $18.4 million. Yeah, so we should probably just show that. So we will remove it from the debt reserve of twenty of uh, twenty four, and then just put it down at the bottom under operating yeah. reserve. Yeah. Okay. So and, then and for be clarity, zero. because that take care of it then because the total line is off by three point four million. I I guess the solution would be to add the uh, water supply charge reserve at three point four million, just so it fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's all. I just. Oh, these are all great. We're, we're, they really well, I just think that a little embarrassed. No, I just no, think that with seriously. the interest rates so high, the bank, the mechanics bank could be sitting on that money for this long is. Yeah. And, and what's cool. perfect about it is we'd probably put it into our ladder CD program, negotiable CD, because okay. it's just under the 250. Right. Guaranteed. I don't think there's any reason for being embarrassed about this. I think Neither. it's really, in my mind, if I were you, I would be very proud of your board oh, that, right. yeah. um, you know, well, that you we know, have such diligence. Let me see if anybody's watching. Yeah. <laughs> see, I knew you Didn't had find a plan. The yet. <laughs> Once again, the strategy, the strategy is there. So are there any more questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Riley. I'm going to go to page uh, board packet. It's 249. I just want to say I'm glad to see the list of the reimbursable mm -hmm. items. It's been such a huge yeah. item in this particular mm -hmm. budget, and so much was carried over. And I just so think when there is a significant number in the budget, it pays to explain it several ways, several times, several places or whatever. Because the the previous total budget was something like 30 million or 32 or 34 million. And it's 48 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's a huge increase. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason it's on this page right here. And it's a carryover, uh, carryover grant money, basically. And I, I'm just glad to see it explained. And, and, and a compliment I want to give uh, to the package that's in this budget. It starts on page 213. I'm not asking anybody to look at it necessarily, but uh, that's not my point. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 219. The narrative that's supports the budget is broken up into several categories, the focus on water supply, uh, conserving um, at the same time, environmental stewardship and transparency. I'm glad to see a narrative in here on those topics mm -hmm. and tie it to the budget. I'm just, I'm just glad to see that. And I think this is where the PR people can maybe, um, you know, if, if they're gonna do anything at all, this is the place where they ought to make the point to, with the public. And I hope they're going to do something. <laughs> they better yes. do something at all, just since we just approved a big budget for more than that. <laughs> and very, very quickly, again, on page 249, this is page 25 of the budget, Suresh, on the same um, uh, list of reimbursable amounts and grants. Is it fair to say that the FEMA reimbursement um, line item includes the state, not just the federal? Is that Was that the intention there? Correct. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I didn't see it otherwise separated out. So, thank you. Okay, just checking for yes. Yes, just under personnel. Are there going to be any increases for those future jobs that we need to fill? Like um, chief finance, do we? You think we're going to have to raise that to get somebody in? Joel, job. Yeah, so we, we're carrying. How are we going to do on that? Yeah, so we're carrying them all at, uh, and I would say the CFO is probably higher than uh, what we'll hire somebody at. I don't know. It'll be close. And we just started having discussions about whether there will need to be moving expenses, and that'll be negotiation once we find a candidate or a three-year signing bonus. Things that we've never considered in the past, but um, we're there on that. We've got a position. Uh, the utility analyst or i forget suresh what's it called yeah it's utility analyst yeah utility analyst position which would be the you know, the numbers jockey we've talked about um, so i think you know the pecking orders we have to 
fulfill Joel's position, which I think the chair wants to talk a little bit about here in a second. Um, and then we will be starting search for the CFO and but those two are fully budgeted. And I, I know we want to get Joel as soon as possible CFO before the end of the year or yeah. at the okay. And there will at least be some crossover between Suresh and a new CFO. So we will have a training period. But um, yeah, the whole job description and uh, mailer and stuff, we're looking at those right now. Okay. There's been a little um, modernization since uh, Suresh came to us in 2012. You know, everything's online and digital now. So we've got to change the description a little bit. Yeah, that's, thank you, Sharon. Are, okay. Are there any other comments? I see no hands raised. I'll go out to the public and see if there's any member of the public who wishes to make comment on this item today. Chair Adams, I see no raised hands. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have had a very thorough and fulfilling uh, discussion on this. I'm very uh, pleased to see all of the interests and very, very thankful to our staff and the team to uh, have put th together such a, a uh, comprehensive budget for us. And I will entertain now a motion to adopt the resolution number 202307, approving the fiscal year 23-24 budget for the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District. Subject to the minor changes that were raised during discussion. Subject to the minor uh, typographical changes that were made during this discussion. I move. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any objections? Seeing none, the item passes. Next, we have our informational items or staff reports that everyone can look at. And um, I don't think we have any public comment. Any board member comments on any of these? Just quickly on um, the update. Um, this would be item 37, the Carmel River Fishery Report. I really appreciated that. And I renew again my request that when it's all done, I want a field trip. I want us to go out I think out that's there. a great idea. I really do. We're yeah, going to get you it's one. It's wonderful. Um, actually, we, there's three facilities that we'd like to get you to. Some people have been out to Sleepy Hollow. Um, you have not. Um, but it's Pure Water Monterey. Then ASR plus the injection field for Pure Water Monterey and then Sleepy Hollow. So, and if you're really diehard and you want to go see Los Padres Dam, we'll take you 23 miles into the wilderness and we'll take you there, but we'll send something around here. Yeah. I think San Clemente would be good, you know, as well. I think you might the old San interest. Clemente, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. But I'm, yeah, we're just, we're almost done with that project. I, I understand we're just probably a few weeks away. Uh, and um, Sleepy yeah. Hollow. So Sleepy Hollow is somewhat more interesting when there's fish in it. Yeah, sure. Um, I, because the river's running, I don't think we're going to be doing a whole lot of rescues this year. Um, so just keep that in mind. Although I've stood right next to it and showed our consultants, I, we couldn't see any fish. And then we ran in Beverly on the place. I should go, oh, yeah, there's like 30,000 of them in there. Didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think a field trip is a is a great idea. Um, and before we adjourn, I'll just note that the um, the board meeting schedule. We have a special meeting on uh, Thursday, July thirteenth at ten a.m., and our regular board meeting will be on July seventeenth at six p.m. And again, just before we um, adjourn, I simply want to stop for a minute and thank Joel for his service. Today is Joel's last board meeting with us. I've worked with him since um, I was elected to the Monterey County Board of Supervisors, and he was active in the clerk's office over there. It was always very enjoyable working with him there, and it's equally been enjoyable working with you here. Um, Joel, he's going to be moving to uh, the San Diego area to be closer to family. He's taken an excellent position, and we're all very, it's sort of bittersweet, very happy for him. Um, but also, we will definitely miss you. You've been a, a great addition to the group here, and I I will see if any of my, my colleagues want to make any comments. 
Exactly what I said to Joelle over the phone a day or so ago. I really, really admire how and respect how hard how hard you have worked, how resourceful you are, um, and just that we can count on you to do whatever whatever needs to be done to make all of this work. I think you know I just really appreciate it, and I wish you well. I hope everything works out well in San Diego. I am. Um... I want to thank you for not outing me for screwing up my calendar <laughs> because you're very patient about it. So it's oh yes, it's so nice about it. Um, anyway, thank you, and thank you for very much for doing such a great job. Being so approachable, no problems. Excellent. Good. Well, thank you again. And um, with that, we will. Oh, oh, good, good. oh good. sorry. Oh, good. I, okay. No, I, I just wanted, I, oh, I just okay. remember a real contribution that Joel made at our workshop where he streamlined the entire process. Right. And I thought we were going to be finished at noon. And I was really hoping we'd be finished at noon. And then everybody wanted more discussion on more issues, which made it even a better workshop. But thanks to the efficiency component that, that he great. added to just keeping us organized. Yeah, it's excellent, really excellent, excellent work. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And he wasn't asked to do it. He volunteered to do that. Yes, <laughs> yes. I hope that his replacement can do as much as he, he can do, but and a little bit better. But all that he and brought to us <laughs> by transcribing while we talk. <laughs> I know that's hard to transcribe while I talk. I appreciate all his effort. I hope his replacement can do the same. And I hope you all really look at that because um, he really um, stepped us up a, a lot in that department, evaluations and everything. So thank you, Joel. Going to miss you. Yeah. I know I'm not going to get paid now. <laughs> <laughs> and I just had, you know, being the new person, the uh, my onboarding was wonderful, very professional, and and your communication with the board and members and making sure we're always here and, and had information we need was very important to me and I really appreciate it. Uh, but we wish you happiness. We know you're gonna be with your family. And so uh, that's what's important. So thank you so much. And I just wanna add, I'm always looking to a place to stay. So let me have your address next time to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wanna make any comments? <laughs> really appreciated my time here at the district, um, working with um, the board members, uh, the general manager, division managers, and all the staff here. Um, everybody has been very supportive um, about, you know, what I do. And I really enjoyed um, working with each and every one of you about just random things that come up or um, just the business of the district. Um, I'm going to miss all of the conversations that I've had uh, with each and every one of you in uh, Monterey County, the district, um, they'll always have a special place in my heart and I'm going to miss you guys all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys should know he came in during COVID when it wasn't the greatest social fabric of an organization <laughs> to come into, um, demonstrated extraordinary initiative, a strong understanding of our, you know, almost um, living, breathing biological process, you know, as an organism. And uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge to teach somebody up as quickly as he adapted to the things we do here. So I got introduced to the water world as soon as um, the DSAL uh, project mm -hmm. was before the board of supervisors. And, you know, yeah. Pretty interesting, huh? <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank all of you for your kind remarks. And with that, I will close the meeting.